Hebrews 12 and 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fall of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See, it ain't going to just affect you. Your unforgiveness, and I'm trying to close. We're going to have to continue this. Your unforgiveness just doesn't affect you. It affects other people. And if you're sitting under the sound of my voice today, no matter how you're listening to us, if you've ever brought yourself to the place of forgiving someone, you know what I'm talking about. Because you no longer have that feeling of hatred anymore inside of you. That's really a torment to you. Amen? It's a torment to you. And while I was studying for this, I remembered a story that I used some years ago in a sermon. It was about a woman and her family that lived in another country. I don't know if they were missionaries or what. But they were driving along on the old dirt road one day and a band of renegades stopped them and made them all get out, Brother Bill, and got them all down on their knees and then started shooting them all. She watched as her family was shot to death. Her, her herself, she was shot, but she survived. And sometime later, she was working as a nurse in one of the medical facilities there in that region. And they brought in a man that had been shot on the gurney. And as they brought him in, they put him there and she went to work on him and went to help him. She looked at him and she realized it was the face of one of those men that had shot her family. Now, what, would our own nature, what would our own nature do? Our own nature would think, well... I'll kill you first chance I get. But this woman, full of the love of God, she begins to nurse this man back to health. And as she begins to do this, this man recognizes, hey, I know this woman. I know this face. And as he ponders and he thinks day after day as she nurses his wounds and she takes care of him and he begins to get his strength back, he realizes... That's one of them people we got out of that vehicle that day that we shot all of those people. I thought we killed her. I know we killed her family. What is she doing? See, he can't relate to that. Our flesh can't relate to turning the other cheek. But our, see, he could have been able to relate. If she have came in there with a pillow and walked up gently beside of his weak body and put the pillow over his face and held it there till he suffocated and died, he'd have been able to understand that. Yeah. He'd have been able to say, well, you know, I understand why she's doing this. Oh, but when she began to show him the love of Jesus, it began to mess his thinking up because he thought, my religion don't teach this. I don't understand what's wrong with this woman. And finally, when he got enough strength, he said, I know who you are. He said, but I don't understand something. I don't understand why you're doing what you're doing. She said, it's because of the one that lives inside of me. Because Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And this man who had been religious, a religion full of wrath, and we know something about that today, amen? Those that crashed into our towers and things there, all of those that was doing it in the name of religion, this man could understand that, amen? The religions of the world today, they can understand having a holy war. They can understand being a martyr and blowing you to pieces and going and trying to, you know, in their way of thinking, getting into their paradise. They can understand that, but they don't understand this forgiven Jesus that we talk about. He said, I don't understand it. He said, my God doesn't teach this. My religion doesn't teach this. And what he saw in that woman, he said, I don't understand it. But if it's possible, I want the same thing you've got. And this woman leads this man to Jesus. Why? Because she showed him wrath? No. Because she showed him forgiveness. Forgiveness is a powerful thing. It not only sets you free. It not only... How do you think it makes someone feel... Oh, they may act like it don't bother them. But how do you think it really makes them feel down inside where they don't let nobody know it, Brother Bill, to think, man, they hate me. They don't like me at all. They can't stand me. They can't forgive me. How do you think it makes them feel? How do you, make, how do you think it makes those, like I said, who watch you know, know that you're a Christian? You claim to be Jesus-loving, born-again, Holy Ghost-filled, 
that you can't forgive. You can't show the same compassion toward others that was shown towards you, even though you owed a lot more to the Lord than they owe to you. My goodness. Anyone who has ever held a grudge or hatred towards someone and has finally came to the place of forgiveness, I don't have to explain to you this morning what it does. Amen? How powerful is forgiveness today? Do you remember the story of Jacob and Esau? And I'm closing. <clears throat> Jacob had gotten his brother's birthright for a bowl of beans and Esau hated his guts for what he had done and actually what he had allowed him to do. We find in Genesis the 33rd chapter, we find Jacob at a place where he done got somebody else mad at him now. Laban's coming after him to kill him. And he's running and he realizes, Brother Bill, he's running right straight into the face of the brother that hates his guts. And he don't know what he's going to do, so he wrestles with the Lord. And you know the story. And if you don't, you can go over there and read it. He wrestles with the Lord and he says, Lord, what am I going to do? Laban's behind me. Esau's in front of me. So he sends out some gifts and things. He says, y'all go on ahead of me. Give Esau these things. And maybe it'll help him to forgive me. Maybe it'll help him to have compassion. Compassion. Compassion on me. Oh God. So here he finds him. We pick up the account of this in Genesis 33 and 4. And Jacob sees Esau in the distance. And he sees Esau running. And can you imagine what he's thinking? <clears throat> he's probably thinking, oh, he's going to kill me. He's going to kill me. What's he going to do to me? And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him and they wept. Are you listening to this? This man that had been filled with so much hatred and so much unforgiveness toward his brother. And he lifted up his eyes and he saw the women of the children and he said, Who are those with thee? And he said, The children with the children which God hath graciously given thy servant. Then the handmaidens came near, talking about came near to Esau. They and their children, and they bowed themselves. And Leah also with her children came near and bowed them, themselves. And after came Joseph near, with Rachel, near and Rachel, and they bowed themselves. And he said, What meanest thou by all of this drove which I met? Meaning the things that you sent. What, what's all of this stuff you're sending to me? And then Jacob says, it's to find grace in your sight. And listen to what Esau says. Esau said, I have enough. Keep thou, keep that that thou hast unto thyself. And Jacob said, nay, I pray thee, if now I have found grace in thy sight, then receive my present at my hand. Now Jacob, believing that Esau is going to kill him, going to be mad at him, going to hate his guts, he sends these presents and things ahead, and he says, here, maybe this will soften the blow. Amen? Maybe I can give him these things and it will cause him to like me again. It will cause at least he won't be quite as angry. Yet he don't find that in Esau what he thought he would find. God has dealt with Esau's heart and he has forgiven Jacob of all the problems that they'd had before. So when he, he finds himself in the arms of Esau and he finds that forgiveness, what does he say? And this is what I want to get to. He says at the end of verse 10 in chapter 33, For therefore I have seen thy face as though I had seen the face of God. I have read that a million times. And this is the first time that I read that. In your face, Esau, I have seen the face of God. Why? Why? Because of the forgiveness that Esau had toward Jacob. He saw in Esau's face the face of God. The face of forgiveness. What if he had gotten there and he had seen wrath and unforgiveness in the face of Esau? He would have not seen the face of God. Whose face would he have seen? You hearing me this morning? In Esau's face of forgiveness, he saw the face of God. What do people see in your face 
of unforgiveness and wrath and judgment and revenge. They don't see the face of God. I'll give you one more choice to choose from. If it ain't God, it's the other one. Amen? Amen? If it's not God, it's the other one. So Esau says, Jacob, I forgive you. And in doing that, Jacob sees the face of God. Do you remember the centurion that stood by the cross when Jesus was crucified? The soldier? No doubt he'd probably been religious. But when he saw Jesus, when he saw Him crucified, when he saw Him beat, all of that, that didn't... I don't know how much that faced Him. Maybe he'd seen it a thousand times. Maybe he'd done got so hard into it it didn't bother him at all. Maybe he was one of them that helped hold the lash to strike it down on his back. But when he stood by the cross and he saw in the face of this man what should have been, and he could have understood it, Brother Bill. Yeah. Brother Spence, he could have understood it. He needed to cry, Father, kill them all. Mm -hmm. He could have understood wrath. Mm -hmm. See, the devil can understand wrath and anger. Mm -hmm. He can't understand this love thing we're talking about. Amen. So this centurion stands by and he sees in the face of this man the face of forgiveness. And when he sees the face of forgiveness, Sister Nancy, he sees the face of God. Mm -hmm. And he sees this man say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And in seeing this, he stands by and says, Surely this was the Son of God. Why? Because of the forgiveness that he saw. He could have understood wrath. He could have understood judgment. But he didn't understand the forgiveness. He knew that had to be beyond the realm of human mind. Amen. Yeah. It had to be beyond the realm of human intelligence to understand. What is he doing? They beat him. They spit on him. They call him the devil. And he's forgiven them. I don't understand that. And he sees the face of God. And Jacob sees the face of God in Esau. I wonder today, Whose face do they see in our actions? Amen? Whose face do they see in our actions? He said, I've seen the face of God because He had forgiven Him. You want to show someone the face of God today? Forgive them. I know that goes against your flesh and goes against your way of thinking. Forgive them. If the Lord tarries next week, we'll look at more of this and we'll realize just how important forgiveness is. And we'll see somebody else that saw the face of God in forgiveness. Hallelujah. Somebody else have something this morning.